Okay, so uh, today we're going to start uh, another topic, okay, and uh, it's like induction. So uh, we're going to do, I'll just start over here. So it's an introduction to strong induction. Okay, so there's... Yeah, is why why strong induction? Well, no, this is a great name, actually. I think you guys will be convinced that strong induction is a really good name for this by the end of the class. Okay, so um, so recall that for induction, for usual induction, and pretty soon I'll I'll, I'll uh, you know drop the term induction. We'll just call both things induction, but. For usual induction, to prove statements of the form, you know, for all n in the natural numbers, p of n, where p of n is some predicate uh, with a free variable in the natural numbers, um, uh, we just need to prove, uh, it suffices to prove. to prove uh, two things, right? Uh, one, which is called the base case, uh, P of one, and two, an inductive step. And this is, uh, this is that P of n implies P of n plus one, and it doesn't really matter what, what variable we use there because this is a, a bound statement for all n in the natural numbers. Okay, so there's this base case inductive step thing. So this was um, this is for the usual induction. So strong induction is very similar, except for we're, we we get to modify this inductive step to something stronger. Okay, so strong induction. is very similar. OK, so, uh, so let me just, uh, uh, well, maybe I'll copy it over here. So strong induction So to prove a statement of the form for all n in the natural numbers, p of n, it suffices to prove, we can prove two things. One, uh, so this is also the, called the base case, p of 1. It's the exact same thing as before. And the second thing is we do uh, a, a kind of a, a strong inductive step, or an inductive step. OK? And this statement is that for all n in the natural numbers, and here's what we do. So it was here we did p of n to p of n plus one, or we could have used you know one increment k to k plus one or n minus one to n. Here we do the following uh, for uh, here we do here the this for let's do j or let's say k. Uh, less than n of pk implies pn. Okay, so this is strong induction. So here we have a stronger hypothesis, right? So this is this strong hypothesis. Okay, so this is a strong inductive hypothesis. So what's the point of this is that we get to assume more in the inductive step. So for this version of induction, induction, we not only assume uh, Pn minus 1 to prove uh, Pn, but we get to assume to assume, uh, well, P1, P2, 
all the way up to Pn minus 1. So we get to assume all of these things. OK? Um, and uh, for right now, I just want to kind of use it and show you guys how it's, it's used. Um, and then I'm going to talk about, like, so hopefully next class I'm going to say a little bit about um, uh, why this is a thing. OK? Does that make sense? So it's kind of like the first time we did induction. We're going to do some examples, and then I'll talk a little bit more about it in a bit. Yeah? Is that similar to, like, I think it was, like, proving, like, sequences or series where, like, you'd have, like, an epsilon, like, you'd have, like, a curve, like, epsilon naught and, like, epsilon, and, like, you're kind of, like, proving, or, like, limits or something, and, like, the last sort of, or, like, that last bit on the board where, like, one is in between k and n, where you kind of, like, show, like, it gets... I don't know, well, maybe I'm, I'm, um, I'm not exactly sure. Maybe we can talk about it after class. But maybe there's something there. I'm not sure. I'd have to see what you're thinking about in more detail. Um, okay. So you guys ready for some examples? Okay. So this is what we're get, we. It's just exactly like induction. We just get to assume more stuff. Okay. So this is kind of a, a fun example. So I'm going to do two examples. I'm going to do this thing about this game called NIM. And then I'm going to prove uh, part of the, the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, which is the decomposition of a number into a product of prime numbers. OK? So NIM is a game. OK? So this is a new little subsection here. So NIM is a two-player game, two-player uh, turn-based game. So you, we'll get back to strong induction in a second. I just need to. Uh, I'm going I'm to talk about strategies for the game NIM, and I'm going to talk about it using induction. Okay? So uh, NIM is a two-player turn-based game, um, and the, the setup is as follows. Right? So uh, the, the setup, so there's, uh, so the setup is that there's uh, two, there's going to be two piles. Of, and we could say sticks, matches, cigarettes, it doesn't really matter, right? Two piles of, of sticks, okay? Uh, of, let's say, matches, okay? So single matches. Um, and uh, the rule is, okay, so, and the, the, these piles of matches don't belong in it to anyone. And so the rules are as follows. So the rules. So, um, so on your turn, uh, you uh, must remove uh, a non-zero number of matches from a single pile from one pile, OK? So it's like I don't get a pick from both piles. They're just sitting there. I, I, I can only get a remove matches from one, OK? And uh, so the other thing is that the person to remove, uh, to remove the last match wins, OK? So like. Um, so yeah, so I have these piles of matches, and uh, you know, I'll just if I, you know, like we'll, we'll play, and if, if it just so happens that uh, I remove the last matches, you know, I get I grab the last matches, uh, then um, I win. Okay, and it may be match or matches. Okay, so like for example, if you if we play a game and you grab the whole pile, and then I grab the whole pile, that would mean that you know, so there's two piles, right? And then I would win because I was the last person to remove matches. Does that make sense? OK. So um, and let me see if I'm forgetting any rules here. I think that's it. OK, so they're not, you know, one player goes and the other player goes. OK, so here's the theorem that I want to prove by strong induction. OK, so the theorem, so there is a strategy uh, so the second player always wins. 
OK, so uh, if I'm the second player, I can play smart enough so that I'll always win. OK? And so, um, so let me say that the two piles of, uh, two, let me say that there's two equal piles of matches. OK, so the pi you know, we'll start with n matches here and n matches here. All right, does that make sense? OK, so, um, so the strategy is as follows. OK, so let me just kind of describe the strategy, then I'll, then I'll write it up. But maybe I can just do the, the base case here. So we'll do a proof. So the proof, so the proof is by strong induction. Is by strong induction. Induction on the number of starting matches n. Okay, so like you know, we're going to start with n and n here. Okay, so uh, let's do the base case. Okay, so suppose. Uh, n is equal to 1. OK, so in this situation, um, there, we're playing the stupidest game in the world, right? where there's one match and one match. OK, and I go, and so I'm like, Joe, uh, you go first, and then I'll, I'll play. So you have to remove a match, right? So Joe, remove a match. OK, and then I pick up the other match and I win. OK, so that's, that's the game. OK, so that's the, the game for n is equal to 1. OK, so, um, so uh, the first player is forced to remove all the matches it's like a child you know uh, let's play let's play a game the one one and then they're like I win yeah Uh, so, uh, the person who, no, 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 you want to be able to, uh, oh, the penultimate match. Um, well, it, I mean, you could re be removing more than one match at the end. Like, for example, uh, you know, like, what do you mean by penultimate match? Uh, so, like, if there's, in the end, you have one and five. Yeah. As long as there are two piles. Yeah, I'll, I'll explain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll explain this. Yeah, yeah. So, so, um, okay. So uh, the first player is forced to remove all the matches uh, from one of the piles, one pile. And uh, player two, two, gets to remove the match from the second pile. the other pile and win. OK, so this is the base case. OK, so let me talk about the inductive step. So the inductive step. OK, so here we suppose To suppose uh, that for every k less than n, um, the player two uh, two has a winning strategy uh, so has a winning strategy uh, for games. For NIM games, with uh, piles, uh, with starting piles of uh, of K matches. Okay, so it's like uh, you know, if if we we get to some sort of NIM game where uh, we don't have n, but we have fewer matches, right? Then, well, by inductive hypothesis, I'm saying player two has some strategy to win. Okay? Okay. So, okay, so here are the cases. So we'll break it down. So, 
we, we break it down. Uh, the game by cases. Okay, so the first case is when player one removes all the matches. So if player one, uh, one removes all the matches from a pile, So this is n matches that matches from a pile. Uh, player two uh, removes all the matches from the second pile. We already talked about that. It's kind of like uh, from the second pile. For, or let's say from the other pile. So we don't have to like label the piles. Okay. So yeah, if the first player removes all the matches, then then you know we just grab all the matches from the other pile and we win. Okay? So if player one removes that's I should probably just like capitalize that. I don't know. I should be consistent, but so if player one removes uh, J matches for J less than N, then, and they always have to, it always has to remove a positive number of matches, okay? Then, uh, what should player two do? So, how can I get it back to the original situation? Yeah? Uh, you remove an equal amount of matches. Exactly. You remove an equal. Exactly. So you just mirror what they do. So they remove J matches, you remove J matches, right? And now, what happens? Now you're at a, a, another game of NIM, right, where you have fewer matches, right? And by inductive hypothesis, so I, you know, anytime there's a, there's a, a game where there's fewer than N matches, we're assuming that there's a winning strategy. That makes sense? So uh, then player two, Two removes uh, J matches as well, as well, which reduces the game the game uh, to uh, a, a fresh game in name. A fresh game of NIM with uh, K is equal to N minus J matches. Okay, and by inductive hypothesis, uh, player two. Who has a winning strategy? Uh, here. Does that make sense? So, um, yeah. So it's exactly like it goes. Like, so, the person removes all the matches. You remove all the matches. If they remove fewer than, fewer than all the matches, then we remove the exact same number. And now we're re we're back to like the original game, with fewer than n matches. Okay. And now, uh, we, we, by inductive hypothesis, there's a winning strategy, okay? Because we assume that it's true that we can win whenever there's fewer things. So now you guys can go uh, run a NIM scam, right? And uh, swindle some people if you wanted to. It's kind of a silly game. Okay. Uh, so since we proved so since we proved the base case and the inductive step, uh, we are done.
Does that make sense? All right. So the inductive step was the following. It was, it was reducing uh, the game of NIM to a previous, to a, pre, a game of NIM that we suppose that we could solve. So the inductive step was, okay, uh, was applying the fact that we could, uh, well, I mean, so the application of the inductive hypothesis was when we, we knew that we could win if there were fewer matches if, than, than N matches. Uh, yeah? Um, so nothing, pretty much. So for practical purposes, nothing. Okay. So um, so uh, strong induction. So for all their math classes, right? From you know, unless you're in like a really hardcore logic class, right? Um, they're pretty much the same thing. Okay. So I mean, they are the same thing. So in any class from here on out, you can use strong induction. And actually, strong induction is better because you have a stronger hypothesis, right? You get to assume more things to do your inductive step. So uh, when I first was doing inductive proofs, induction proofs, I just, <laughs> I just did everything by strong induction, okay? Which is, why not, right? You get to assume more, and it's easier. So, uh, and it includes the, the other, uh, the usual induction where you just have to increment by one. Um, yeah, and so I'll, I'll say a little bit more about this tomorrow, or the next day, okay? Other questions? Let me do another one, okay? So let's do another. Proof. Uh, okay. So let's do the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Okay, so. Okay, so there's this, this theorem. Okay, so this is the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. It says, um, so for every, every natural number, number greater than two, greater than or equal to, greater than one, let's say, greater than one, One uh, can be written as a product of primes. Okay, so uh, in symbols, uh, we'll just I'll just say it again. So for all n in the natural numbers. Um, if n uh, if n is greater than or equal to two, um, well, I'll just say if n is greater than or equal to two, then uh, n is equal to p one dot dot dot, or let's do p one p two dot dot dot, p r for some primes p1, p2, pr, okay? So these are, um, does that make sense? So we can write it as a product of primes. Um, so let me, let me make some remarks here, is that, uh, so let me make some remarks. Remarks. Um, so we, we allow uh, repetition. Um, so, so for example, seventy-five. So this is equal to uh, three times five times five. So here, uh, P one is three. Uh, P two is 5, and P3 is 5. Okay, so this is uh, what we mean. Um, and so this is a product here. So uh, let me also say here, there, in LaTeX, there's a difference between this symbol here 
And if I were going to put, so this symbol and this symbol are different. Okay? This dot 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 is along the center, and this dot 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 is on the bottom. Okay? So this is like C dots and D dots. Right? And there's no commas here, notice. So this is a list. Huh? Uh, this is a product, and this is just like a list. Okay? Um, so here's one remark. The other remark is that if um, we impose that uh, P1 is less than or equal to P2 is less than or equal to whatever, um, so that's a C dots, PR, then uh, the, this factorization is unique. Okay, and I think I'm going to have you guys do that on an exercise in the homework. Okay, so to do uniqueness. Just because it's you know, something you can do now, it's kind of informative, and uh, if I did it in this class, it just kind of, we, it would get us away from what I want to be talking about. Yeah? Uh, don't you have to define what a prime is for this? We did define what a prime is. So a prime is a it's natural number. A, a, like number equals a, b, where either a or b is one. Um, uh, yeah, so that's one definition. That's an equivalent definition. So uh, in the last homework we had, we gave three different versions, right? So the three different versions were um, that, that if P divides A times B, then P divides A or P divides B. The other version was if P divides A times B, so this is in particular for the natural numbers, okay? If P divides A times B, uh, then, um, I guess I need to keep that there. Um, if P divides A times B, then uh, either A or B is 1, okay? Uh, so that was that the factors are units. And if we did it for the integers, it would say plus or minus 1, okay? Um, and the other one was that, uh, that they're associates. So that in, in, in this particular, so if P divides AB, either A or B is an associate. So that means that, and the only associates in the natural numbers are the prime numbers themselves. So associate, let me just remind you, I'm getting a little off here, but an associate is that, uh, you know, uh, uh, A is an associate of B if uh, A looks like B times a unit. Okay, so, uh, let's, so we did define what a prime number is. And the one that we should be thinking about is if P divides A times B, then P divides A or P divides B. Okay, so, all right. Or, or, or equivalently, due to what I said, the only divisors of the prime are one in itself. All right, okay. So uh, let's do the proof. Okay, so we will prove this uh, this by strong induction induction on n. So you always have to pick the thing that you're going to do induction on. And the proposition here is that n is a product of primes. Okay? So let's do the base case. And in this proof, what is the base case? Where do we start? Who said it? Two. two. We start at two because we're going to, you, know, it's, it's, you know, this is for n greater than or equal to two. Okay? So, uh, so uh, in the case, n is equal to 2, uh, uh, you know, n is a product of primes. And in that notation, r is equal to 1, you know. Okay, so it's a product of just itself. 2 is a prime. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's do the inductive step. Okay, so there's the base case. So in the inductive step, uh, there's kind of, so, so, so does, who has a strategy here? Does anyone have a strategy? Like what can we do to prove this? So let me just say, let's, so, uh, so we, will, we get to suppose, to suppose uh, for all, all k less than n uh, that, 
uh, k can be written as a product of primes. OK, so this is what we get to suppose. And then I'm going to break this furthermore into cases. But can, it, can anyone think of a really easy case to prove? Like, what can we say about n which would make this statement easy? Would you guys agree that this was an easy case? Since 2 is prime? So what would, be, what would also make this one easy? Well, three, yeah, three would be also easy because three is a prime as well. What about in general? How about if n is a prime? That's an easy case, right? So there's kind of two cases we could break it up into. n is a prime and n is composite. And if you think about it, if n is composite, it breaks up into two things. And those two pieces we're allowed to apply the inductive hypothesis to because those things have to be strictly smaller than n. Let me just write that down, OK? So, um, OK. So, Let's look at the case, case one. So if, if n is prime, uh, then it is trivially uh, a product of primes. OK, let's do the second case. So what's the opposite of n being prime? Yeah, so if n is composite, if n is equal to a, b, with a not equal to 0, or not a not equal to 1, and b not equal to 1. So here, these are all integers, OK? Or, yeah, integers, natural numbers in particular. Um, then. Uh, well, by inductive hypothesis, uh, we may write, OK, so A as a product of primes and B as a product of primes. So now I need to introduce some notation. So how do we, do you, does anyone have letters that they want to use? So let me just pick some. So like traditionally, we use p's and q's, OK? So we could do p1. OK, I, I, and also when I'm using these p's, I just want you to know that these p's are not necessarily the same as these p's, OK? So I'm just going to I'm just going to use them, OK? So, uh, so a is p1, p2, pr, and b, let's say q1, q2, dot, 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 qs, OK? Where where uh, R and S, uh, where let's say R and S are natural numbers, of course, and um, and P one and the P I's and the Q I's are primes, and uh, and P one P two. Uh, P at PR, Q1, Q2, QR, R, or QS, huh? That's how we started our primes. Okay, does everyone see how I got this? Right? These are strictly smaller than N. And by inductive hypothesis, right, uh, by inductive hypothesis here, if so these are both instances, examples of a k less than n, right? Um, by inductive hypothesis, right, we get to break these up into two products, OK? Hence, uh, uh, n is equal to a times b, which is equal to p1, p2, pr, q1, q2, qs, and so so n, n is the product of primes. So 
this is the inductive step here, all the way up to here. Okay, and we broke it up into two cases. So this, this is kind of, we just finished this case here. Okay, so since uh, we proved the base case, Uh, and uh, the inductive step, uh, we are done. Okay, does that make sense? Oh, we took the yeah, since we done. Uh, yeah, we proved. Thank you. I do that sometimes. It's embarrassing. Okay. So since we proved the base case and the inductive step, we're done. Yeah. All right. Does that make sense? So like, what we did is we wrote it as a composite, and then we applied the inductive hypothesis where we could write it like this. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, so. Uh, so my, the people in the other class were like, this seems so much stronger, right, than the normal induction, right? It's like we could assume way more. So that's why it's called strong induction, because we could assume all the previous cases. Do you guys have any questions on this? Yeah. Are you ever going to have to use just regular induction? Uh, are we, are you, am I going to force you to use regular induction? Uh, probably not, but I could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Q, S, and P, R are just the last. Primes. They're just the last primes. Yeah. Okay. So like here, S would be, or would it R would be like three. Yeah. Yeah, and then I saw someone else. Okay, so um, okay, so we have a little bit of time left. And so uh, let's do some exercises. Oh, I should do the exercise up here. Um, so so the induction worksheet. Okay, so I'm not sure, let's see how many strong, well, we just need to do more induction proofs. Let me get it out here. Okay, so for section two, do, um, uh, so I mean one, two, these are like regular induction. Four is a good one. And um, so 19 is a really good one. So 19 is all about the Fibonacci numbers. So I think that one's kind of fun. Okay? So um, all right, why don't we try those and then uh, I'll come around. 